Hey guys, Chris here, and Long <laughs> Road Academia Chapter 269 came out today, and after two weeks of nothing, well, you know, after a week, after a week-long break of showing Jump not releasing anything, I thought it was gonna be a double issue. It was not a double issue. I was a fool to think of that, but either way, this was still worth the wait because we get the con a somewhat meh conclusion to this because it also leads a lot of questions and also some possibilities of what's going to happen next. So it starts off with Endeavor getting getting, getting to Mirko right, right after he gets to Mirko, lays her down on the ground. She is bloody, torn apart essentially. All, all the gashes and stabs, the stab wounds, she's bleeding out. Endeavor essentially get, gives her a cloth to bite down on so he can cauterize her wounds that way she doesn't bleed out. And basically goes like, you owe me from last time. I think the time he's talking about um, was most likely. Oh, damn, what was it? Kyushu, that that was it. Kyushu, and he's like, "You don't owe me for you don't owe me for anything." He's like, "He's still in there. You have to take him out." Endeavor is basically thinking about Shigaraki and everything, so he also ends up telling us the exact amount of time that was going on. With this whole time of Mirko in the way in the hospital, it was five minutes since she landed in the lab. She found herself in the lab. Five whole minutes. So she, so she took on five high end Nomu that had multiple quirks for five minutes straight. Five minutes straight. That is impressive. And even though they weren't fully awake, awakened at the time, she managed to take out one with almost not with the loss of her arm. Which still took a toll on her. She held her own against the remaining four. I mean, the remaining three. Not, sorry, the remaining three. So, that impressed Endeavor, obviously. But then all of a sudden, the Hanya Nomu that did that whole liquefaction rupture combination attack last chapter shows up out of nowhere to try and take down. Endeavor says, like, you're number one. Make me feel more alive, essentially, like that. And starts to attack Endeavor. As this is going on, we cut back to the fight between Aizawa, uh, President Mike, uh, Crust, and the other heroes that joined uh, Miracle, Miracle and Endeavor in, in helping Mirko fight off the high ends in the lab at that moment. And going through their we actually get some inner thoughts of the Nomus again, being like, I, I haven't, I, my body hasn't been fully alive for long, stuff like that. But no, my quirk's, my quirk is gone. So... More and more of these guys are showing real thought, real processing thought, showing that they're awakened. They're a lot more awakened. So, here's the thing. Um, as this is going on, Crust is confirming what Mirko said, that Shigaraki is beyond that point, and saying that, while also saying that, Mirko, I'm so glad you're alive, that stuff. Essentially saying that we need to go there and, t and break the capsule before the doctor can wake him up. So, as this is going on, Aizawa is trying to fight off all the no, the high helping everyone fight off the the, the high ends. He's like, I sh if I can go back there and help out Endeavor, I could, but I can't afford to blink right now because he's basically keeping a ton of high ends from using their powers. So with that going on, you all, he ends up telling um, my, President Mike and this other hero that were just int introduced to called Exless, who apparently just shoots a blazer from his eye apparently to head back to take on the Doctor and stop Shigaraki from waking up. So, they go there, and one of the and one of the high ends gets in the way, the same high end that pierced Mirko multiple times in the previous in the previous two chapters. And right, and right when he was about to get in their way, Crust actually launches a shield at him. So like shoot shield. I think the attack was shoot shield or something like that. So yeah, shoot shield. And that was honestly a pretty a pretty cool scene, and it is glaring again. I gotta keep this thing at a low low brightness. There we go. This was honestly a pretty nice drawing, I have to admit. So as this is going on, President Mike heads towards the the room, and Shigar and uh, the doctor is trying to wake up Shigaraki, rummaging through the computer, saying like, you know, if the data is still there, he's like, okay, looking th doing a bunch of system checks and looking for the button to wake him up. He's like, I don't want to to wake him up while he's all half baked like this, but I don't have much of a choice. But at, right, right before he's about to do it, he you know shouts, "Wake up, Tomura Shigaraki!" President Mike 
does this one huge yell that levels most of the, the entirety of the inner lab. You can literally see Uchiko's ears pop, like bleeding from the high intensity noise that um, uh, <laughs> that Mike did. And having having a power to literally make your voice essentially strong enough to to cause a sonic boom, a sonic boom was like they shatter rooms with the sheer force of your yell. That is insanely powerful, and I'm just glad we got the song to see uh, President Mike do that. And then he ends up going through a mini flashback where Aizawa was going to go towards the hero raid and Mike's like saying, we should, if you're going, I'm going, something like that. The dream, talking about the dream that they had with Obero. And then he's like, and then President Mike managed to get a good punch in on Uchiko at the end of the, right, right when the, when the end that mini flashback saying, that's for making my, my buddy cry. And as this is going on, Uchiko is on the ground crying and and he's basically saying that I was only living for all for one or and to guide Shigaraki. That was the only thing. So, yeah. He's like, that was the only reason for me to live, but now it's all over. And we continuously see in multiple panels that um, the heroes that were up in the hospital uh, managed to take on the rest, of the rest of the Nomu and get down there to help out. And it was shown at the start of this chapter that Rock Lock and everyone else in the hospital told Endeavor Endeavor and the others to head down to help out Mirko and that they'll catch up. So we see so we see thirteen, we see Ryukyu jump out of nowhere and Rock Lock also take on the high end with Endeavor as he manages to get rid of deal the finishing blow to that high end. So yeah, a bunch of heroes working together against these high ends, that's an obviously obviously good thing. And it was and it was honestly a pretty damn good um uh, scene. I mean, you have to look at this. I mean, Ryu, Ryu could just jumps through the wall in her dragon form. And Endeavor punches right through the freaking Nomu's head. That is amazing. But the last chapter, the last page, is basically saying that now the Lord... Uh, he's been, I'm saying, like, it's over. It's all over. The Lord of Evil's dream is dead. And essentially, because it's a false... It's something like a false sense of security, like, oh, they won? But when they went up to check uh, Shigaraki right after shattering the glass, that he was the glass tube that he was in, they say they say he has no heartbeat. And Ujiko does state that Shigaraki was essentially in a near death state. That way he would better take on the pressure of the surgery for when he never really gets the powers to be you know who he is, to be the beacon of all evil. So that is something to look into because. He's in a near-death state, and now he's out. He wasn't well woken up. And even Ujiko is, you know, upset about all this. Scared, upset. He's crying. He's bawling his eyes out. The thing is, at the end, Shigaraki's mouth opens, and we cut to Tartarus with, all, with a picture of all for one. A picture of all for one. Right when Ujiko says the Lord of Evil's dream dies. Now, that is something that I am curious about. It's possible that we're going to cut to Tartarus next chapter. Maybe All for One will break out of Tartarus or something like that. Make a huge jailbreak. Or maybe not. We have no idea. But that is something that is a possibility. For all we know, maybe Shigaraki ended up waking up after all. Maybe the shock from uh, all that is starting to, do, to wake him up. Or maybe he's waking up on his own now he's out of the tube. I don't know. All I know is that there's no way the heroes won that easily. They got the jump on the villains. There's no way in hell that they're getting through this without some kind of twist in the end, like Oshiraki waking up. If only no Higanto Market will show up. But not to mention all the stuff that's going on right now in the hospital is what's going on at the mansion at the exact same time. So we got we got to go back to the mansion pretty soon also to see what's going on because we still got Tokoyami helping Hawks against Dabi. And we still haven't seen Deku or Bakugo in this arc yet, or Todoroki, or any of the members of Class 1A other than the ones that were in the initial forward march attack against uh, the Liberation Army. But there's still a lot more that we could see, because for all we know, maybe Shigaraki has some kind of quirk that he's subconsciously using while he's in that near-death state to talk to All for One. And maybe that's a quirk that All for One 
and, and maybe the Tartarus can't pick up on it because maybe O for One isn't the one using the quirk, but he's be relaying the quirk. Uh, he's being the, the one being communicated with that quirk. It's possible. Maybe O for One ta was, was talking to Shiragi the entire time, telling him what the quirks were, how he managed to master it all. Maybe, I don't know, it's a weird thing. It, it's a weird theory, but it's possible. I mean, One for All is basically, you know, the Avatar state. Basically, the past avatars, something like that. But it's possible. All I'm saying is that it's possible. We have no idea what's going on. Mirko is probably knows she can't work as a hero anymore due to all of the injuries she, she sustained. Uh, Dr. Uchiko has been captured. The raid on the hospital is still going on without a hitch aside from Hawks being mortally injured and the, the, the villains losing twice. Yantomaki is still the, the real wild card of this arc because he has done nothing yet. And, he, and in the previous. Uh, in the very last chapter, that was parts uh, that was at the mansion. He was getting. It seemed like he was getting a call over the radio. So, was it Ujiko? Was it all for one? What was it? Shigaraki using a quirk while he was not near that state. I mean, if, if Shigaraki wasn't near that state, it's possible he wasn't doing anything. Maybe he was aware of what was going on, but he just couldn't act on it. That's something we don't know yet. But yeah, all, overall a pretty good chapter in my opinion. I really did enjoy this. And that last page showing Shigaraki and uh, Shigaraki, nice little, um, uh, sh nice little mini panel showing the bridge to Tartarus, and then an image of All for One. So it does give you the question of whether or not we're going to head cut over to Tartarus now as another part of the arc, or if we're going to cut back to the mansion or just finish off with the hospital at this moment. Because at this moment, it seems like the heroes got everything under control. You know, no. Aside from Mirko's tragic injuries, I hope she doesn't die. I hope she comes back. But other than that, a pretty good chapter, honestly, and a pretty good arc so far. We still get the mansion to go on. We still got Dobby after revealing that he is wants to be able to basically make St Stain's world a freaking reality, and he's basically insane, obviously. But yeah, there's not much else to talk about for this chapter. Mostly action, some. Some hints, but overall, it gives us a, a sense of security for the heroes at the hospital, at the very least. But as we all know, in any series, if something looks like to be going pretty well, even after some kind of after a hero ends up getting some kind of tra very bad beating, things could always get worse. So for all we know, Shigaraki could just wake up out of the blue and start wrecking everyone's shit. Or we can cut, or maybe something will happen again. The market will show up, or they'll get captured. But something will happen where Shigaraki will wake up, or someone will break Shigaraki out. Most likely, Gantomakia, because again, Gantomakia is the, the wild card of this arc. He doesn't obey anyone except for Shigaraki or the Doctor, or anyone, he, or anyone Shigaraki says has authority over Gantomakia. But it's mostly just all for one Shigaraki and the Doctor, because if the League members there could order around Gigantomaki, they would have done so already. So yeah, that's really all I gotta say. Gigantomaki has done nothing in this arc. We've been teased about it. We've only seen it in like one chapter. So, there's still more we can see. There's a lot of things uh, Horikoji can do with this arc. So, there's not much else I can talk about. But yeah, I'll see you guys again in two weeks for the next chapter. Hopefully we don't get too many delays. But then again, if we do get delays, it's fine if the monk, if the if, the, if Horikoshi has more time to draw thing, draw and write things out. But with all that's done, hope you guys are staying safe, and hope you guys have an awesome day.